now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's the Rambo with me. I'm Alex Bennett. We go until midnight tonight. we got a real special interview for you right now. Here is a guy who really doesn't want to be interviewed, right? <laughs> right. And, and what is the reason for that, Don Giller? Uh, I could say self-loathing, but that's not really it. Is it, self- um, is it self-loathing? Uh, it, it, no, it's not. Because it's just, you, uh, know what, you know what's interesting about you is because you've called the Monday show, for example, and you call and you're very funny, and you're very you're able to talk beautifully about stuff, and yet when it comes to a one-on-one, you just don't think you're worthy, do you? No, no, one-on-one is I actually prefer one-on-one, uh, but not as a formal thing as this. Um, it just seems. How is this formal? Well, it's it's one on one on Zoom, and and this is going out to all twenty viewers. And all know, twenty it's... viewers that I have, yeah, yeah. You're you're, you're wising up to the to the to the sham I've been pulling off all these years. You know. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> um. But so, but it, it's strange. I mean, and you're very funny. You know, I wrote him and I said, uh, "Okay, well, let's then do it on Thursday at one o'clock." And your reply was, "I'll shower." <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're you're a very funny guy, or do you well, think, or don't you? And, think and silly, funny? as 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 you noted in the park, uh, yeah, that was that was well taken. You are silly. I am silly. You like being silly, don't you? And I like being alone. <laughs> now let, let's let's establish for people your credentials, okay? I notice in back of you a lot of uh, boxes of tapes and things like that, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Over there, yeah, are, are uh, late show DVDs. Is what they are. Late show DVDs, uh, uh, but they're yeah. DVDs that you made up, right? Um, or that somebody made a copy of. The no, they're, they're, uh, I'm not sure how, uh, yes, a, a oh. cop, copies that someone else made and I duplicated. Right, and it's The Late Show. Right, and, and then and, below and, there, and, uh, yeah. uh, let me see if I can pull Well, that's this Late Night, here. right? And Late uh, Show. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the boxed stuff, which I'm trying to point. Yeah, well, I, uh, I, it's okay. There. Yeah, there, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that's that's all late night stuff that I recorded. Okay, now l- let, let's start in the beginning here because you for, I guess, how many years have you been posting Letterman shows? Oops, hang on. Someone, something, okay, I thought something just fell. Um, on a, I guess on a focused basis since I suppose the fall of 15. I would say. The fall of 15. And I mean, I, there then, are some isolated things as far back as 08, 09, but, but those were just little little things here well, and there. When I, I went to, when I went to uh, YouTube and I saw a Letterman show, it said Don Giller. And I asked Shecky, while he was still alive, I said, who's Don Giller? He says, oh, he's a fanboy who really does a good job of, of, archiving, <laughs> of archiving the Letterman shows. Do you have every Letterman show? Yes. Every uh, I'm I'm missing four morning shows, and I they may not exist anymore. Really? Because yeah. I because I got a disc of the morning shows from Shecky, but I don't know if it was all. How many episodes were there? Uh, ninety. Ninety, because it lasted yeah. what three months or how long? Yeah, uh, yeah, June to October. But six, let's seven, say eight, for nine, late, ten, late late night and late show, months. you have every every show. Yeah, it, it it took years to acquire the late night footage, but uh, the end of uh, seventeen, I finally got the two remaining complete shows of that uh, that I was missing. 
Now, why did you choose to do Letterman as opposed to Leno or Ferguson or anybody else? I mean, what was it about Letterman that obsessed you? Um, well, one, uh, I, I, I have taped all of Ferguson, um, but I haven't did, I've digitized very f little of it. Um, and, and I'm no longer, I don't think I'm able to put anything up anymore. So, but it, but yeah, no, I, I was a fan of, of, of Ferguson. I, I liked the show a lot. Yeah. I thought he, he came, he, uh, he approached the, the irreverence that, that I found so refreshing to, to see and hear. Yeah. Well, um, one of the other questions that I asked Shecky about you was, why doesn't Letterman stop him? And his answer was, it's too much trouble. You know, <laughs> it, 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 nobody's interested. Nobody seems to be interested. Well, I think that was before the channel, the, the Letterman channel launched, uh, where they became official and uh, and to their, to my gratitude, they've kept my channel intact when they have every legal right to 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 to, close, to shut it down yeah. um but they haven't and, and i'm internally grateful for that um I, I can't say a bad word about that right. uh, that, that right. um but have they have they stopped you from putting anything else up yeah since the launch i'm no longer able to uh put anything up without their permission Without their permission. Yeah. Okay. Do you have their permission to put anything up? Um, I haven't. I haven't asked them. I, I've put up a couple things that really didn't violate their um, their ask. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for like the the little one minute Shecky thing tribute that I put up. Yeah. I made sure to uh, include only uh, screen captures. Uh, and music that was unrelated to the show, but right. I thought very much relatable to, to Rick. Right. Um, and I asked, you know, I, I sent them the, the footage and asked if it was okay, and I would say, yeah, this, th that's okay. So yeah, yeah so I I'll, I'll ask them stuff. And um, now, did they depends. did they ever complain to YouTube about your stuff? Um, not that I'm aware. Yeah. Um, what what happened there? In the past, there there have been a couple uploads that uh, that they would call me. Mm -hmm. the, the the worldwide pants people would call me and ask if I would take it down, and 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 that's a far cry from them instructing YouTube to take it down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a far more I was going to say polite. That's not the right word. Uh, a gracious way of of of, of operating. Yeah. Um, and of course, I'd, I'd, I'd hear to anything they ask. You know, if they want me to take it down, I take it down. Well, let me ask, also ask you that you had like uh, uh, a ton of stuff up there before they ever started their Letterman channel, right? Right. Uh, is that stuff still up, or did you have to take yeah. it down? Oh, so it's still it there. Is, it's so still if people up. go, yeah, everything, everything is still up. There, there are there are a couple of little minor clips here and there that that for lots of legal reasons. They asked me to, actually, they asked just they just asked me to, to it was unlisted and they asked me to put the private. I said, I'll, I'll, let me just get rid of it. I'll delete it. And, right. But that was that was so minor, you know, it, it yeah. because it was unlisted. So, it got so, me so if people years. want your stuff, and a lot of times it's whole episodes. Uh, not many. Uh, very few whole episodes. Um, it, it's the compilations that that people seem to like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where like this is a compilation of everything that was Shecky as an example. Yeah, yeah. which which I'm going to do for your pop-ups at some point once yeah. I get it together. Yeah. But uh, but, but I am not going to put that up. One, I'm not going to put it up without you're okay. Yeah. And two, I'm I'm only preparing it for you. Uh and then and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. But but I I would never put that up without without oh, uh, okay. uh, you, you're uh, more than welcome uh, to, okay? I give you my permission. Okay, but I'll, I'll let you see it first. You know, once 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 okay. I do it. Okay, I'll give you my I'll give you written permission if you want it. <laughs> I will get my lawyers to send you a letter. Uh, Can you yeah. email me some blood? That would be that yeah. would be nice. Yeah, but you know, it it's that you kept this whole idea of the Letterman shows alive on YouTube for years, and uh, they should be grateful to you because now they started their own Letterman channel and it made people want that material. You know? I, I think they are. Um, and you know, I, I have nothing but a great relationship with them. You know, I I, I can't 
complain yeah. about anything, at least publicly, mm. <laughs> um, uh, as to as to how they've treated me. You won't get him in trouble now because he's dead. But did Shecky help you at all? Um, you're, you're opening up a can of worms that that oh. just, that just today I got. Wait a minute! You just froze up. Permission on to because I. Hold on a second. You're just freezing up here. I, I, Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. You're freezing up. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me, to, let me just pause this for a second. And we'll start uh, and, up uh, again. Anyway, uh, what were you saying when I asked you the question about Shecky? You said that's opening up a can of worms. So. Yeah, but I, I got the okay today to to talk about it. Okay. Um, um, and it's it's... I guess I don't know if it's a long. I don't know how coherent I can be talking about this, but yes, Rick was an indispensable source for um, filling many voids in my late night collection. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, because he kept a lot of stuff. I mean, copies, not you know. Yeah. Um, in. Uh, I, 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 that doesn't matter. Um, in November of seven of sixteen, mm -hmm. um, he loaned me. It was the first time he loaned me this stuff, mm -hmm. and and he he said that you know I'm sort of the late show's backup, and and I decided that you referring to me is his backup. Yeah, uh, and that's why he agreed to 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 loan me all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So okay. should anything happen to his collection, at least. I had nearly all of it. Shecky um, was uh, very good at collecting this stuff. Do you know what he had a whole uh, copy of? It and he sent he, I, I ha somewhere. I have a copy of it. I don't know where it is, but every appearance of Darlene Love singing um, uh, "Baby Please Come Home." Christmas, baby. yeah. Um, I put up a compilation of that uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe he took your compilation and gave it to me. <laughs> I don't know, but you know. Yeah, I, mean, I wish we could ask it, him. It's interesting. That it's people like you that keep things alive, you know, uh, and, and and that's important. I mean, when I first met Shecky, as an example, I met him, and he took me down to Eighth Avenue. I think it was Eighth Avenue. Maybe it was Ninth Avenue, and they would all meet in front of this film company. Right. And they would, out of the back trunks of their cars, trade films with each other, film cans with each other. Okay, this is before videotape was big. Film mm -hmm. cans. And uh, uh, I always, and, and I got it, when I got to know Shecky more, I got a greater appreciation of the people who had these films because it was illegal to have them. Okay, if you had a copy of, uh, oh, I don't know, Casablanca, let's say, on film. It was an illegal copy because it was even mm -hmm. copied or whatever. The only way it would you could get it usually was by renting it from the film company, and 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 at the same time the film companies didn't care about their stuff and it went into disrepair. And these people were saving them. I mean, they literally saved a whole history of film out of the trunks of their cars. Right, and, right, and so I always considered the archivist, people like yourself, the 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 hobbyist archivist, let's say, to be indispensable. I mean, I remember uh, that uh, NBC uh, had a copy of Humphrey Bogart and his mm -hmm. television version of uh, Petrified Forest. Mm -hmm. The only problem was they had no audio for it. And I talked to Shecky. I said, "You hear about this? They trying to they had petrified forest, but they couldn't uh, they couldn't uh, show it because they didn't have the audio." He says, "I got a copy downstairs with the <laughs> audio." Okay, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And if yeah. it hadn't been for people like Shecky, we wouldn't have that historically. Yeah. What now? 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 I don't have audio on you. I'm just I'm just doing a bit. Oh, I see. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, you know what what happened, and it, I mean, it wasn't when when Late Show ended in May fifteen. Yeah. Um, uh, they had a website that that CBS had co-owned, mm -hmm. um, and that that included 
hundreds, maybe a thousand late show clips. Uh, no late night clips because it wasn't their property. Right. Um, and after the show ended, uh, CBS had rescinded their rights. It was now all Worldwide Pants' property. Mm -hmm. But what CBS did, it took a few weeks, but they took down all of the clips. While, while they still had the right to, uh, they, they essentially shut down the site. Mm -hmm. And and it occurred to me that that you know all the stuff that was then accessible is no longer yeah right uh, and that's not right uh, um, and then uh, within a few weeks someone at the show who's still working there um, was uh, was trying to find she, there was a special a late show, a special on late show that Ray Romano had hosted a week or so before the the, the last late show. Mm -hmm. um, and and sh and this woman, she was responsible for uh, for paying the people who had appeared in in these clips. Mm -hmm. And there were a number of clips that she couldn't find, so she reached out to me to to help find her those clips. And the only reason she reached out to me is because there's no one else working at the show. Um, and that's what it it dawned on me that you know I could maybe be useful in other ways in filling a void that had suddenly cropped up once the show had ended and and all the clips had disappeared mm -hmm. um, and that that's when I started to think about I didn't I didn't do it for a few months to think about digitizing all the late nights um, and while I was doing it uh, it occurred to me, you know, this. I need to share this stuff. You know, I, I can't, I can't see this for my own enjoyment. This sounds so self-serving, and I don't mean it to be. But well, you um, know, you, you're you're very interesting in that. For instance, anything you put up on YouTube, if you have enough viewers, you can monetize. Okay. Yeah, but I can't. You, you've chosen I, not to monetize any it, of the it, Letterman stuff because it wasn't my content, and it was, it was, it was one of the smartest things I've ever done because had I monetized it um, the people in charge both NBC and Worldwide Pants would have frowned upon that and they, they would have had, have had every right to because it, it's not mine to make money off of yeah but it's you know there content. are people there are people on YouTube oh, yeah. running copyrighted material and monetizing it that's that's their and issue. I don't know mine. how they get away with it. I have no idea how they get away with it. Yeah, I was wondering how well, you were getting away with what you were doing all those years, but well, perhaps know. because I was not profiting off of it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it certainly made you much more honest and uh, yeah. much more in the area of fan hobbyists, could we call it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's yeah. that's all I was. You know, I, I don't pretend to be anything other than that. Um, uh, I, I think I'm an okay amateur when yeah. it comes to editing this stuff because you know I don't have the well, tools. Well, actually, I got to tell you, you're an expert. I mean, some of those edits, those those oh, compilations no. you did were brilliant. Uh, thanks, but but I don't I don't have the tools or the know-how to do to do the stuff that that the that that the Letterman Channel is capable of doing. Well, the Letterman um, Channel also has the masters available. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and their quality is far superior. Well, my to, question to is, because you've dealt somewhat with the with the Letterman people on this, how did they get a hold of the late uh, the late night stuff? Um, uh, because that's I, owned by NBC, and right. at least until a few years ago, they were not happy with each other. I I, I don't have the inside story, yeah. uh, and and if I did, I'm not sure if I could share it. Um, uh, all I know is that they've licensed. NBC has licensed late night to to Letterman. Uh, what that entails, I don't know. Yeah. I just I just don't know. Now here's Sorry. my here's my here's my big sixty four thousand dollar question. Um, uh, I accept PayPal. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Which, in your opinion, after seeing almost every show Letterman ever did, what was better, late night or late show? Um, you, know, I, you know, I think about Beethoven, uh, his early works and his later works. Um, you know, they each have their particular appeal 
you see the genesis of ideas and a genesis of of uh, development of his composing style mm-hmm. uh, or early Beatles and late Beatles. Yeah. You know, there, okay. there's so yes, I, I particularly prefer the late nights only, not only, but perhaps because uh, I would stay up watching and, and just marveling that this stuff is on the air. Um, uh, and Barbara Gaines had had this great quote when when she was profiled on the Letterman Channel a few weeks ago. Uh, she said, "On late night, we were we were kids playing TV, and when once we got to CBS, uh, we were grown ups. We had yeah, to play by best, very grown up good, roles. Good way to describe it. Yeah, good, good way um, to describe it. No question about it. It, it it's just it, it's a different animal. Late show. Yeah. There, there are elements of late show that that I think." Uh, retained the late night uh, um, uh, feeling. Uh, feeling, yeah, feeling yeah. odor. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think that ever went away. Um, but you know, I, I I hate to pontificate, and 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 so I'm not. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, yeah, I, I gravitate I'll, toward I gravitate toward the NBC. Okay, shows. now let me ask you an even more technical question: <laughs> Who is better? Pre heart problem, Dave, or a post heart problem, Dave? Because um, I notice a change. Well, yeah, I mean, he he, he didn't he, go out as much. Yeah, he, he slowed down. He 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 stopped going to rehearsals. Um, he took a, maybe that meant taking care of himself or or finding other priorities in his life yeah. other than the show. I don't know. I you know we yeah. he and I have never but, chatted, but, and and I'm uncomfortable. Again, pontificating. I, I just, um, y- yes, I agree with you. That there's there was a discernible difference. Yeah. Um, so so you you have like almost three flavors of Dave in his history. Um, well, late night I always thought it had a few errors of its own, you know, ERA yeah. errors. Um, and as as did late, so it's not just three. It's maybe. You know, and I, I always kind of thought that the head writer helped shape the sensibilities of the show, at mm-hmm. least at least on late night. I'm not sure about late show, mm-hmm. um, and so I I tend to separate the the errors by who who was head writing the show. Yeah, because you had two basic head writers on late night, and that was uh, Merrill, right? And Merrill, then Jim Mulligan. Downey for a year, and then Steve O'Donnell. And yeah, then but, Rob Burnett. Oh, and and Gerard Mulligan did the monologues, right? Um, he was also the segmenter. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, he did do he did do the monologues, but I. Um, but he also segment produced the show for much of of the first half, or if, not get the first half. The, the first three years, he was mm-hmm. he was doing double duty. Um, I I just felt that late night was. You're right. I think she described it best. A bunch of kids playing television. Yeah, you know, that, and that's that they what, felt no one was watching, and they were, and they didn't understand or not understand. They didn't abide by rules that they were never dictated. Well, that, that's what made it so refreshing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's what made it so interesting. Uh, just amazing. I mean, uh, that show went through so many different changes, you know. And um, uh, I know Dave hates the book The Late Shift by uh, what was his name. Uh, 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 Bill Carter. Bill Carter. Uh, but that book really is fascinating. And oh, so, yeah. And so was the TV mo- made-for-TV movie that they made out of it, you know, on, on HBO. Um, that whole history is fascinating. The Leno-Letterman thing, you know, the fact that Letterman, to the, to the end, didn't really want to go over to CBS. He wanted The, the Tonight Show. Right. And it was Carson who finally told him, hey, it's not The Tonight Show anymore. It's been Leno's right. show for a year, and he spoiled it. You know, go over to CBS um, and have a good time. That's all kind of, I mean, it's its fascinating history. Uh, I, I, um, what mattered more to me was yeah. what we were watching as it was broadcast and how mm-hmm. th- these outside events would affect what we were watching. Yeah. Um, you know what it, it, is Dave pissed because of what's going on you know behind the scenes and how is that reflected in his behavior on the show yeah uh, 
but it was it was the behavior on the show that was more interesting to me than than what was what we think was going on behind well, the scenes. Well, I've said this in the past about my own career, which certainly is nowhere near what Dave's became. But that, and I argued this with radio stations. I said you've got to have a good mood in this radio station. Because people walk through that hallway into the studio, and then when they go on the air, whatever they felt going through that Mm -hmm. office plays itself on the air in some way, shape, or form that may you may not notice. But it, you know, if it's raining outside, you do a show differently than if it's sunny outside. Mm -hmm. It it's just inherent, and the same is true with Letterman. I mean, whatever was going on behind the scenes manifested itself on the air. (laughs) Right, Right. Yeah, and and that was that to me was the, was the fascinating part. You, you know, know we, how was all that out, that's outside stuff reflected on the show? I usually just uh, you know, these interviews usually only go twenty five minutes, and we've hit twenty five minutes, and there's still okay. A, goodbye, thanks. A ton of questions that I want to ask you, uh, but you know something, uh, we can do that another time. I hope now that you're used to it, Don Giller. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, okay. I mean, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, we'll stop if you yeah, want. Why stop. would I? Why would I want to talk to you? Yeah, I know. And well, I know. that's what I'm. Little thinking. old you. Why would I want to talk to you? Because <laughs> listen, all I got out or, of you, it's it's interesting. Are, are you projecting, or 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 that's what you're saying about yourself? Um, I mean, I say that about myself too. <laughs> oh, okay. I, uh, oh, I've been in this business how many years uh, since I was uh, 14 years old? Right. And I'm now 83, and I still don't know why anybody would want to listen to me. And, well, that, my, and, I mean, my, and my wife agrees, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's do this again, okay, Don? Okay. okay. No, thank you. I, I appreciate and it. Stay this where is... you are because I want to talk to you after we're through here. That's, All right. That's Don Giller, ladies and gentlemen. Look for his name on YouTube. Thanks, everybody. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. That's Don Giller. Interesting guy, right? Right? Funny guy, right? Right. Absolutely. I'm saying that, and ought to be nice, although he might be listening right now, because uh, he was he had so many reservations about doing an interview. And I, I told, to begin with, it's, I, never, I never do interviews. Uh, that's a great misnomer, and I think anybody who does an interview is wasting your time. Uh, I hold conversations, and I always have, and and that's what it really is. It's a conversation, and I think that makes it kind of easy, I think, maybe, if I'm not mistaken, for the other person, and, uh, you know. Tomorrow night, uh, Lori Thompson will be here in this uh, first opening spot. She is very popular on this program. Our combination together is still magic. And uh, we did a couple of them today, and we'll be playing them for you. And uh, I've even talked to her about creating a new show here in which it's she and I, and maybe some guest brought in, uh, because we just work so well together, um, you know. But anyway, uh, let's get to the people who are waiting online here. Oh, well, we just lost one. We lost Jeff. Okay, well, that happens, He and he calls back, okay. Uh, we have... Um, let's see here. We have Kevin and we have Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie, I guess you don't have uh, uh, softball tonight? It rained out again. It, it what? It rained out again. It rained out? What's the temperature out there? Temperature is 87, so it's not too bad. Oh, really? Because when on TV tonight, they were saying it was like 117 or something like that in Texas. But that was before that front came through last night. No, that was today they were saying that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. let's see. Maybe it was hotter earlier. I'd, I'd stayed yeah. in the house. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Wait, oh, uh, Jeff, <laughs> turn, turn it off. Turn off your browser. Get yes, rid of your yes, browser. Sir. Rained yeah. out again. It rained out. What's the no, temperature? See, now, <laughs> 87, so it's not too bad. Oh, really? Because when well, on TV, just kill it. Like, kill it. Just get rid of your browser. Just like it, 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 well, the, he got rid of the whole thing, so <laughs> he'll be back. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so anyway, is how's softball going for you this year? It's been a, it's been hectic. 
Yeah, we have all new people. We're running the softball program for the city of Austin, and it's just been a real nightmare. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, but you, but, it, but you, you're in charge of paying everybody and everything and doing that kind yes. of stuff. Yes, I pay all the umpires for all the games that they do. How much do they get paid per game? Twenty-five dollars a game. Well, maybe I'll move down to Austin then. And Usually four games a night. I wouldn't, and they work as uh, what, uh, coaches or referees? No, referees, we're umpires. Umpires, okay. Yeah, we call balls and strikes now, and sure, outs. Sure, I'm gonna get a job with you being an umpire okay. when I'm calling referees, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, how, so anyway, uh, and the weather is uh, still warm down there, but not Disgusting. I uh, said only got up to ninety four today, so I can't imagine the heat index got much above one hundred and ten. Yeah, I thought I thought I saw ninety four in that yeah. part. part uh, you know, it was cooler. Oh. Actually, it gets uh, oddly enough, it was cooler in Houston and places like that than up in Dallas. Dallas seems to get the brunt of it, and up in, yeah, because uh, Houston's cooled by the Gulf. And up where Jack is, it's pathetic. I mean, yep. I saw a temperature of over 110 or something up there in in, uh, in his neck of the woods. Stay up there. Stay up there. I don't want yeah, that here. Yeah, you don't want it coming down. <laughs> you okay now, Jeff? Jeff, are you okay now? I think so. Okay. You didn't think so. I'm trying. Anyway, yeah. So, anyway. Um, today is, uh, you know, today they finally... Announced that yeah. the people probably died last Saturday, Sunday, yep. which was is kind of ridiculous, because it seems as though the United States Coast Guard, somebody like that, heard an explosion on their sonar, or an implosion, yeah. the implosion, explosion. They both sound the same, and then they didn't report it because everybody was so all juiced up to go out and find it that they didn't want to give a false report so they you know they knew days ago and then i just saw an interview with james cameron i finally mm -hmm. said why hasn't he been doing interviews and i guess because he was waiting to see how it resolved itself and tonight he was on with anderson cooper and he basically said that that thing was a piece of crap you know that they were making it out of a uh, composite of uh, resin and uh, I can't remember what the outside was. It, it was uh, oh, some kind of... Aluminum and polymer. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. It was something else. But anyway, he said that the problem with it is, is yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It's lightweight and it, it's strong. But will you put it in the water enough times and send it down to that depth and it starts getting fatigue real fast. And eventually, it's an accident waiting to happen. Okay? And he said, that, that's what it was all about. Yeah. You know, they were just using this, this polymer or something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, and and uh, that it should have never been. He says his, his, which has gone down, believe it or not, further down than the Titanic, uh, he built out of pure steel. I mean, he said, I would not build it out of any kind of material which would fatigue. He said, steel will not fatigue. He said, and that was the problem with it. He said, the only good news about it is, is that if that thing imploded, they were dead before they knew it. You know? Yeah. So it was, it was better than sitting, it was better than the other scenario we had where they were running out of oxygen, they were running out of food, and they were probably up to their knees in crap because by then you, a lot of people would use that bathroom i've uh, got a theory too you you got a theory yeah because i used to work with cylinders every day for 18 years and you know those four big white cylinders on each side of those things yeah <clears throat> those are what i used to, i used to fill those well i didn't fill them but we used to deal with those and they those were called what we called tunners and they were <clears throat> they were typically filled with like CF4, HCl. Mm -hmm. um, they they filled them with various gases because they were they were large and they were you know less change outs for smaller cylinders. Mm -hmm. I think they use those for air. I don't know what they but they, I think they were also used for uh, ballasts. 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, you know, cylinders, even small, low pressure, 2250 uh, PSI cylinders, have to be hydro tested at, at, periodically. <clears throat> and most, you know, in their. Well, what were they using those cylinders for? I'm not sure, but they weren't labeled. So I, I was thinking that they were just using them as ballasts. They may have had air in them and they let out air to go down mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, they could have been using them as oxygen storage. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that vessel that they were in um, was never certified or tested. Right. And, you know, they went down at least 30 times. Yep. And a typical cylinder like that has to be hydro tested every so often for pressure. So when they hydro test a gas cylinder, mm -hmm. it has to be done, either, you know, according to um, the, the uh, National Highway Transportation Association, you have to test a inert gas every 10 years and a flammable gas or poison gas every five years for, for strength. Because when you fill it with pressure and then it's released with pressure and then it's filled and it's released, the walls expand and contract. And I'm sure, you know, Charlie knows all about this. That's what uh, I heard Cameron say. They expand and contract about and they expand and contract and they expand and contract. Right. And over time, they stress. And if they don't do a hydro test on them to make sure that they can take that strength and it's measured, the same thing is happening with that vessel they were sitting in. That that PSI, the 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 tension on that vessel going down that low is five thousand PSI per square inch. Five thousand. They say pounds it's the weight inch. of the Empire State Building sitting on top of you. Yeah. Yeah, it's five thousand pounds per square inch. Mm -hmm. So, the pressure on that thing going down. And then coming up, and then going down, and coming up, and going mm -hmm. down at least thirty times, right? And it's a carbon fiber or carbon fiber vessel with some titanium in it. I think it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to use nickel cylinders that are solid nickel, and they had to get tested every five years when they had the uh, uh, tungsten hexafluoride in them, highly corrosive. Um, gas inside them and they had to get tested all the time too for for you know stress and my uneducated theory was that it just got too stressed and they finally just said uh, -uh i ain't gonna do this no more I, but uh, you know the uh, uh, cameron's theory and i you know cameron somebody you really got to listen to he's done th yeah. he's done over 30 dives with his uh, unit well, that and, unit had gone down over 30 times, too. Yeah, but he said that what did it was the, the, the this, um, what, fiber, fiber, I, I don't know what they used. Carbon, it's carbon fiber, that's carbon what I was talking fiber. about. Carbon fiber, yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about those tanks. No, 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 oh, the, the yeah. vessel that they were yeah. sitting in was carbon well, he fiber. Just, he steel. just said that it had gone up and down so many times that it was bound to start having stresses and breaks in it. it nobody, and yeah, nobody, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And, it, and typically... In a certain amount of times, you should test that thing to see what the, if it's taken any stress, which is a hydro test. They fill it with water, they pressurize it, fill it with water, see if it's moving or not. They measure the wall movement, and then they release it. And then they fill it and they release it. They measure the wall movement to see if it's stressed. Mm -hmm. and they never did that because it was an unclassified and uncertified vehicle. Yep. And yep. that's how they were bypassing the safety part of it. Well, I'm hoping the good that comes out of this is that we've created something called the Titanic curse and that nobody does this anymore. You know, I mean, this whole idea of tourism to the to the Titanic is is tasteless. Well, they need to they need to do it safely. They, they can't mm -hmm. be allowed to bypass it. You know, you have experimental aircraft mm -hmm. and we have experimental. I mean, it's the same thing that Musk is doing, except he's going up. These guys were going down. Well, Musk, no, uh, yeah, Musk is going up, yeah. But yeah, Musk, it's the same thing, though. It's an experimental aircraft, and they can get around stuff too. Well, mm -hmm. th no, those uh, Musk has had to pass a lot of a lot of uh, uh, aviation. <laughs> yeah, but there are certain things that he gets around because it's an experimental aircraft. Well, I mean, 
it is obviously. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, and so is so is what they were doing. Yeah. Now you know, so it, it's the same yeah. thing with an airplane. I mean, I go down here to the, the local airport, and they've got experimental aircrafts, and they label them right across. My daughter rode in one, and it scared yeah. the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> John it's, Denver, it's, it's, they're labeled as experimental aircraft, and they're allowed to do certain things because they're not tested. But they're going up there to try it out to make sure it works. Well, you know, all I know is if I were uh, able to get a free ride on that Ocean, whatever the name of the company was, Ocean, Ocean, Gate, yeah. Ocean Gate, which is now a new term for it because, like, Watergate, it's Ocean Gate. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, um, the, 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 it, it's, I would not have even gotten in that damn thing. I mean, it looks cheap. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It looks like they built themselves a, basically a tank, and then they shove people in it with the two TV sets that they got from Best Buy, and a remote <laughs> controller they got from Sony. Well, I don't know if that was a Sony and controller. Put a couple computer laptops in it. <laughs> yeah, and that was Let's it. Go. I mean, you know, be it, that should be a little more scientific than that. And it, it was it was a cheap shot operation. We're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna charge people two hundred fifty thousand dollars to go down and see the Titanic. And half most of the time when they went down there, they couldn't find the Titanic. Hmm. You know, they didn't even have GPS or any kind of guidance systems nope. inside the sub to go away, be able to find it. Yes, Charlie. Well, people always keep saying about it how smart these rich people are well that what they did there wasn't very smart <laughs> rich <No>. and dumb <laughs> yeah no and david pogue you know who david pogue is don't you <clears throat> he's a tech writer and then he's also on cbs oh, yeah. sunday morning and he kind of reports on stuff he went down in that thing uh but they were going to go down to do the uh titanic and then something went wrong with it and they came back up and he never got to go down uh and he saved his life <laughs> that'd have been a sign <laughs> Yeah, and so they t took everybody over to the uh, coast of the United States and then took a dive there so they could see what it was like. And I don't think Pogue even went on that one. But he said in interviews that he, when he's talking to people that he didn't feel very comfortable about that thing, you know? I mean, you just want something a little more scientific than, okay, you all sit down here and don't try to stand up. You know, I mean, <laughs> uh, 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 even in Cameron's, I think they have a seat they're in. You know, uh, it, it, it was. A, it, I think at one at one time he was in prone position when he was going down. I re I remember something about that. Mm -hmm. That his his vessel he had to be in the prone position. Prone to what? Yeah, prone <laughs> to. <you know>. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's. But, it's yeah, it was. It, it was a. It, you got to realize that you know mm -hmm. these guys are quote unquote test pilots, but the fact that they were bringing people down there is another story. I mean, these guys were adventurers and, and, and basically test pilots. Yeah. But, you know, that's how you learn. People like that have to do it. But, you know, bringing people down there with them is another story. I wonder how many other companies there are doing this. I don't know, but they're sure going to get looked at. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, believe me, there's no submersible is going down any longer without being fully inspected. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by professionals who know what they're doing. Everything's stopped right now. Uh, it, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> for I think, I think this is going to kill people wanting to go down there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if not, they're just damn stupid. Uh, I would, I would ride with Cameron. Only his vessel only takes two people. He and a, and a, and, a, and an engineer. Uh, and well, at one point he was only sending down a camera, wasn't he? Initially, he was sending down a camera. Yeah. Then he started sending himself down yeah. with, with an engineer in this, what mm. is almost a, it's about, you could call it a, an enclosure for a human body, you know? It's what it really <laughs> is. And, but it, it, he scientifically spent, he said he spent a fortune to make sure it was right and that it worked well. It's a hell know? of a lot of pressure. Yeah, and that, uh, you know, that he, he said it's made out of steel. Uh, steel won't, crack it will it, it will it can <laughs> yep, it will. oh yeah it, you just got to build it right 
Right. You, you, if you, I was, I, we had cylinders that norm, normal cylinders are, I don't know how thick they were. I can't remember. They were 2,250 PSI mm -hmm. and able to handle about 3,500 on an overfill. But we also had cylinders that we sent to NASA for the, uh, for the uh, spacecraft that we filled with helium. But they were able to handle uh, 5,000 PSI. But those things were bloody heavy. They almost they almost weighed, uh, God, I can't remember. They're five or six hundred pounds a piece. They were bloody heavy. Yeah. You could only roll one at a time, mm -hmm. where normally we could roll two cylinders at a time easily. Yeah. So if you take a cylinder, a cylinder, which is you know the tall cylinders, Sorry. they're about one hundred and fifty pounds a piece. These yeah. other ones were like three, four hundred pounds. Yes. Easily. Yes, Al. But they're real thick wall. So the the uh, older diesel subs that we had in our fleet, when you get down to about 300 feet, it starts crushing the hull. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, it doesn't cause catastrophic failure usually, but they they weren't built like the nuclear subs. They they The pressure will, will stress the, the, the steel. Yeah. And you can... You can put it like you could measure across a, from point A to point B at sea level, and then when you get down to three or four hundred feet, you'll lose a couple inches in those old. Oh, yeah. Somebody so showed a styrofoam cup when you it was the regular yeah. size of a styrofoam cup. Uh, I don't know where I saw this. I see this on the Cameron thing. No, I don't know. But anyway, uh, they also had a styrofoam cup that had gone down to the Titanic and came back up. And wow. it was that small. It had crushed that much. And wow. that was just the air inside. Yeah. You know. Huh. So, I mean, uh, it, that, it, it, I feel sorry for those people. On the other hand, one of the people who got killed was the guy who was running the company, and I don't feel sorry for him. Oh. The yeah. only thing that would have made this good is if Donald Trump took the dive with him. <laughs> the world would have been happy. Have you heard the latest thing about uh, about um, uh, Zuckerberg and uh, Elon Musk? No. Uh, Z Zuckerberg has challenged him to a boxing match. Oh God! <laughs> and it looks like like Elon Musk is going to accept. Um, this is. It, it, how, 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 how many here, here, how many want here, to take guns in twenty paces? How, how many here would pay a pay per view price to watch that? Okay. I think it'd be good if uh, Trump got in there and then they put uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger well, they, 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 in the tag team. That's going to be the opening. Uh, uh, that's going to be the undercard. Yeah. yeah, put put Arnold in there too, and then they all get in there at once. Oh, I, uh, Arnold will beat them all up. <laughs> Listen, I could probably beat I up that ass. <laughs> pudgy orange specter. Anyway. Uh, I thought you would kick your ass. Yeah, so anyway... Uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's it's a sad situation, but there was also a cluster frack. I'm going to say that now because I'm trying not to get demonetized since they've been very devil may care about demonetizing me. They don't demonetize the live show, which goes up as its own thing, but they are demonetizing the other version that I put up afterwards, and they're identical shows. So you go figure that. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm just saying cluster frack. The cluster frack that went on, though, about this whole thing is almost as amazing a story that should be investigated as the actual sub itself. And that is the fact that everybody was making the wrong calls. You know, that by as early as Sunday, we had proof that that thing had imploded. Sunday, right? You know, hours after it went missing mm -hmm. because the uh, the Navy or the Coast Guard, I can't remember who, had uh, a sonar in the water around that area. They can hear, by the way, according to, I think Cameron said it, they can hear almost everything that goes on in the ocean now. They have that many sonar units around. Sonar buoys. Huh? They're called sonar buoys. Yeah. Sonar buoys. And, yeah. and yeah. they said they got, uh, they heard what was the, uh, what was an explosion or it could be an implosion. They both sound the same mm -hmm. that happened on Sunday. 
uh, they were remi they were remiss to report it as fact because uh, they felt it would stop everybody from looking for it uh, if in fact those people were still alive. Okay, so, uh, but everybody, like I think the United States refused to go in there and do anything initially. And I mean, they took so much time that even if they hadn't imploded and that thing was running out of oxygen, they were never gonna get to them in time because everybody was jumping over everybody else saying, oh no, we think we know where to end. It was just, I think everybody was totally incompetent. The good thing about all this news for five days is we haven't seen Donald Trump on TV. I have. Oh, I have it. Yeah. Well, he being a little quiet lately because he just got the uh, the uh, whole the the lawyers for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, prosecution had to give him all the information they have. This is you have to have that for a trial. Part of discovery. Part yes. of discovery. <laughs> And uh, so they handed him all the tapes and the names of the people who testified against him and yeah. so on and so forth. And I think he's up to his ass right now reading that. That and alternately po uh, uh, pooping his pants. That was the explosion in the water they heard. Yes. Was him <laughs> taking a dump at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's, uh, that's a big, you know, uh, he, so he, he just got those, so maybe he's been quiet because of that. Hmm. Um, also, I don't think I, lawyers I, had to tell him to shut up on that one. <laughs> well, I think after the, uh, 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 what's his name, Brett Baer over at, uh, over at uh, uh, Fox, yeah. after that interview, I think his lawyers just said, Donald, you got to listen to us. Shut the goddamn up, you know? It's just not, this is not doing you very much good every time you go on television and start admitting to stuff you're denying in court. Yeah, you know, so. Why? Uh, well, he I listens. Just, huh? He doesn't care. He, he, you don't think he cares? Uh, well, he obviously pays lawyers, but does, well, or doesn't but pay he doesn't lawyers. doesn't listen to them. And doesn't no. listen to them. Doesn't listen, yeah. to, because no, there isn't a lawyer in the, worth his weight and whatever that hasn't told him probably a dozen times, do not go on television and, you know, talk about the case. You can go on and talk about how you want to be president and all you're going to do for the country and how your, your competitors are idiots and morons and jerks and everything else. But when it comes to this case, you've got to say, hey, I'm sorry, I can't talk about that. On the advice of my attorneys. On the advice of my attorneys. And... You, you know, though, what I find really stupid are all these news people who go, why hasn't Biden said anything about the Trump uh, <laughs> thing? And, and you <clears throat> morons, he doesn't say anything because he doesn't want to affect the outcome. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He did, there was something in the news earlier today that, that oh, not Biden, o Obama, well, sorry. Biden did what I consider the stupidest thing that any president could do. No calling she a dictator. Oh yeah, that was That was not smart. Not the day after you had Blinken over there. Yeah. You know, uh sucking hiney. See, if YouTube, you can't do anything about that. Uh you know, over there kissing his keister. Um gee, it's amazing how I can clean it up if I have That's to. That's right. No uh, words. kissing his keister. And, and actually getting kind of a nice reaction from Xi and, you know, get some positive discussions. And they talked about Biden coming over to pay a visit and so on and so forth. And then the next thing that he does is goes on the air and says, oh, she's a dictator. And then somebody today asked him, you said that she was a dictator. He said, yes, I did. He said, well, do you think they're, not, do you think they're gonna drop any kind of meeting with you? And he said, oh no, that's gonna be on. Are you kidding me? Are you? Jeez almighty, can't we find anybody but morons to be president of this country? Yeah, so I wonder if Blinken had a word with Biden about that. And there's no way to backtrack on it. You know, no. he can't apologize. That would look bad. You could just bad. sit there and do it. Trump doesn't say he never said it. 
Yep. It was <laughs> AI, AI did it. Chat GPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You did, you, yeah. That's okay. the way you backtrack on this. Yeah. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Um, so uh, let's see here. What else is in the news? Eh, not a hell of a lot. Um, you know, uh, my wife, of course, watches MSNBC all day long, and they keep repeating the same stories over and over and over and over. I said, you're watching the show this hour? She says, yeah. I said, it's the same show that was on last hour. And it's, by the way, going to be the same show that's on next hour unless some news item breaks or unless, you know, Trump does another interview somewhere and then you'll play that person's interview. You know, so, uh, I, but today seemed like a bad, a dull news day. So these people didn't seem to have much to talk about except the same old stuff, you know, same old <laughs> stuff. But uh, uh, let me see here. So, yeah. Big heat wave in Texas. You weren't here earlier? Really no, not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, if anybody's right. going to mention it, it's going to be Charlie. Oh, I missed the, I missed the first 10 minutes. My bad. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Oh. Did you talk about the heat wave, Charlie? Alex brought it up. Yeah. Because oh. I knew there was a heat wave down there. He was living the heat wave. Yeah. Now, let's look at the T-shirt tonight. I don't oh. trip... I do random gravity checks. That's very good. You got that from the uh, Trump Library, right? <laughs> Actually, you should have got it from the Biden Library. Biden oh. does more falling he than Trump does. Than yeah, so. yeah. Well, no, I know what it's like. I mean, I'm uh, I, I have trouble with my balance these days, you know, because of various drugs. I do anything, but only four toes. So I. Yeah, I sent Mar Marjorie had a, 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 a meeting with her neuropathy guy today, her neurop a neurologist. And so I said, well, you know, ask him. I'm thinking of changing urology people because, not urology, neurology people, because uh, I said, it's, you know, this other guy kind of bothers me because he did this test on me and the test was this blood test. And then he panicked and sent me to this guy, did $5,000 worth of, uh, I, everybody knows the story. Um, I did ask that guy though, what about this test my doctor took? And he <clears throat> said, oh yeah, I saw it because he sent it to me. He says, this is nothing. And then he said, gave me $5,000 worth of a blood test, okay? Uh, I think every corpuscle was examined in great, well, anyway, and then I never heard from the doctor. Never mm -hmm. heard from him. And then his nurse called me and said, you want to do a follow-up? And I said, to what? <laughs> you know, and then uh, she said, well, you know, I said, well, what happened is he never called me with the results of the blood tests. And she said, well, that's because there was probably nothing wrong with them. Because if there were, he would have gotten a hold of you. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, for $5,000, the least you can do is, you know, have your assistant dial the phone for you. Anyway, yes so she, and no. So she she talks to this doctor, this neurologist, and he looks at my, pulls up my medical record of this test, and he goes, "Oh well," he says that test goes up and down, but I would take another one immediately. I would get a hold of your neurologist and have him order up an, another one. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, will this never end? No. You know, will this never end? Because all these doctors, all they're practicing is defensive medicine. Yep. You know, yep. and and uh, uh, yeah, I could have multiple myeloma. And then again, I could not. I don't have any symptoms, you know. So, I mean, hmm. what what is this? You know, why can't I have one doctor just say, Oh, let's take it easy here. You know. Oh, go get another one immediately. Well, this I, I already have this this cancer and blood guy look at it, and he said, "Oh, well, that was nothing." I guess one of those numbers that goes up and down. You know. Well, it, but it, it just it it just and then it threw me off the whole day. I was just really pissed about that. Yeah. And uh, I, had, I had blood work drawn last week mm -hmm. for a series of things, and the urologist said. I've got your PSA number in there, but don't let them do it while you're actively on antibiotics. 
for prostatitis. It's okay. Wait a minute. Told, told well, them I'm... not to do it. They did it anyhow. But... And my PSA came back uh, in my normal range, 0. Mm. 0.06. 0. 0.06? That's very good. Very good. Yeah, it's normal. It, it, it's only been higher one time. It went to 3.2, which is still good, but a, a, a big Did you problem. have an infection? Yeah. Oh, well, that's it. That's yeah, well, that, uh, that's why the urologist said, tell them not to do it. I'm getting over an infection now. I've been on antibiotics for almost 60 days. Mm. Prostates are hard to penetrate mm -hmm. with stuff. So anyhow, um, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, ask Phil. He'll beg to differ with you. They managed to get to his. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. But uh, it just it just annoys me. I mean, it, it you know, and I just... I just went, I'm not going to call my doctor and order up another test. And then he's going to tell me, well, did you go see the other doctor with the cancer in the blood? Yes, I did, you jerk. You sent me there. And then this guy, you know, charges a Medicare 5000 He never got that. He got like 1200 but a thousand, $5,000. And, mm. um, you know, I mean, he can't even call me. Come on, what's that all about? And that's it's about doctor, it's time that, to find another doctor. That's the doctor you recommended. But then again, my, uh, my uh, uh, um, what do you call it? My regular doctor, my GP or whatever you want to call him. Um, uh, also, when he saw that there was a little, what was some kind of problem uh, with something. And he said, oh yeah, you should go see the, uh, uh, this, this guy. And it was the same people. So I had two doctors who recommended them. These people must be going around because they're a big company, all right? Big, beautiful offices and everything. They must go to doctors all over town and pay them for the recommendation, you know? Mm -hmm. Just recommend us, recommend us, because I can't see why any sane human being would put up with this organization. So, so that, that kind of gets to me after a while, you know? I'm tired of, you know, I want to go on a vacation soon. And even though I'm a little lightheaded and I don't walk as good as I used to and things like that, I'm sorry, I want to go on that vacation. And I don't want to, I don't want to take some kind of test where they go, oh, you know, you better stay here and we better test this and then we better test that. And then you got to test this and you got to test. I know I just want to go on a goddamn vacation, you know, <laughs> leave me the hell alone. And if I drop dead tomorrow because I didn't get enough tests taken, so be it, you know. Um, but at least I'll have a nice vacation. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, and uh, I took a walk today, and it was like it was a lot more difficult today than usual. I don't know it's why. Hot. Huh? It wasn't hot here. For me, it was oh, hot. It was windy here. Windy and cold. Yeah. I know this in the morning. We've it was. had unseasonably cold weather. <coughs> I'm not trying to rub that in, Charlie. We've had unseasonably cold weather mm -hmm. here. I know. There has not been a day, there's only been two days where it has gone above eighty. Most of the time it's it's between you know, in the in the in the mid seventies. And this is in July this is in June. Yeah. Really? Should be nicer. Should be a hell of a lot nicer. No, anyway, but uh, um, so any, anybody seen any good TV shows? No. Nothing. Yeah, okay. I've got a bunch, but you don't like them. What? <laughs> I have a bunch of shows I like. Well, like what? Like what? Well, I, I love these Korean dramas that I've been watching on Netflix. Oh, I'm not saying that they're terrible. I mean, I don't watch them. I mean, I watched, uh, what do you call it? The Squid Games. Yeah, you know. Well, hey, listen, the the, uh, the uh, South Koreans are doing some good work lately. Yeah, you know. So it's a, what like what shows are you talking about? What, a, what can you give us an example? Well, it was the uh, Attorney Wu. What was it? The uh, Amazing Attorney Wu or whatever. Can't remember. That was a couple of months ago. Attorney. Wu? There's another one called uh, Crash Course in Romance. I just finished. That was great. Really. Fell in love with the, with the female uh, is, star. Is, 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 you're running, you're probably seeing these on Netflix, right? Because Netflix yeah. has all those South Korean yeah. stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, um, 
Have you seen this series that uh, that uh, oh, Barack Obama's doing on no. people who work? You know, working. I, I can't. Remember, I think it's called Work. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it, what he what he's done. It's four episodes. Years ago, a guy by the name of Studs Terkel wrote a book called Working. And what he did was he did stories about people who worked and people in the lower classes. And, and Obama decided to do essentially the same thing, except at every level. He starts off with the, just the, the base worker, you know, who makes minimum wage and you know, doesn't make a lot of money and has to make ends meet in the worst sort of way. And then he goes to the next level, which is like a supervisorial area in which people have enough money so they can maybe buy a house and they can have a car and they can have a vacation once a year mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And then I haven't seen the next episode, but that's going to be about people who are in uh, professional jobs. And then the top are going to be CEOs, the last episode. And it's fascinating. And he's doing a great job of it. And he's mm -hmm. talking about the history of... of of the classes and he said the great thing about America the most patriotic thing about America was is is the establishment of a middle class because before the United States you went to a place like England and you had what the upper class and you had the lower class there was mm -hmm. no middle class and that it's purely an American invention and a good one if it works you know, and he says today it's very hard to be it, it, in middle class. You can be anywhere from fifty thousand dollars a year to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And there's a great difference between those things. No oh, shit. But it, it, it's a very good series. I, if you get a chance, watch it. And I've been watching uh, what is it, Black Mirror? You, you know the show Black Mirror? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you really? Uh, this has been on for about five seasons. This is sixth season, and uh, the stories are really great. It's like this, like kind of like, kind of describe it as a new age Twilight Zone, you know. And and uh, all of the stories have to do with something weird, but you can't figure out exactly where it's going. And uh, this season has been exceptionally good. Uh, we just finished watching the last one tonight, but was, that's a show I would. The, hmm? Was it the Twilight Zone where William Shatner was on an airplane? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Out the window, and some monster was eating the engine or something. Yeah, well, you can't see it on television, but I saw it on the big screen. They actually showed it once in a theater, and if you look closely, the uh, guy, the the monster on the wing of the plane, is wearing tennis shoes. No way, really. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's Donald Trump's father. Yeah, no, no. yeah, no, but it, 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 you know, I mean, this is wearing sneakers. Wow, yeah. this is a very good show. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember exactly uh, t -t 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 what the um, <laughs> it's called. Dark is it called Dark Mirror? I think that's what it's called. Dark, and then Mirror. Well, see. I'm hooked on Poker Face on Peacock. TV. Oh yeah, that's very good. Yep. It's very good. Uh, dark Mirror, yeah. Uh, there we go. It's Dark Mirror, and it's uh, it's it, I I would suggest it very highly. Okay, it's got six seasons, so if you really like it, you got a real treat in for yourself. And the first couple of seasons had to all do with technology. There was technology webbed, mel melded into it. This time it was a little different that way. You know, um, but uh, anyway, so uh, that's some of the things I've been we've been watching. We got a text from the Weather Channel that the Texas Texas grid, because of the heat wave, is at a hundred and two percent. They're expecting it to crash. At least you won't freeze, Charlie. This sucks. <laughs> this sucks. Well, you got to yeah, remember the politics there and the, and the Well, you're, if I'm not mistaken, your governor did something about making sure that uh, there was no way uh, that you would uh, 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 were having anything to do with any other state to supply you with electricity. That's, That's right. right. They're not on the grid. And they're not on That's the national exactly grid. What it is. And so now, if their grid goes out, their grid goes out. You know. 
That's it. Because I won't freeze to death. Huh? Yeah. Well, you, you won't freeze this week. Yeah, at least I won't freeze to death this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Texas, I'll send you one of those little fans like the the little Asian ladies do. Yeah. Well, I mean, Texas oh. is uh, is uh, it, it can get pretty damn hot down there. Believe me, I know those oh, days. Yeah. I know this the year or so that I. How long was I in Houston? Two years in Houston. And really? boy, I'm telling you, 11 months out of the year, it was humid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just terrible. Just terrible. But. And, and but that's not as bad. Have you ever been to Vegas? How many of you ever been to Vegas? Uh, yeah, but it's not humid in Vegas. It's oh just yes, it hot. is. Yes, it really? is. Oh, I've humid. never been there. Oh. Yeah, there are times when it gets humid, but it gets hot. Yeah. And yep. you know what that's I read about? Hot. Remember, oh, we sent all those troops over to um, Iraq. Yeah. And then they would say, "Well, it was 130 today." Yeah. And these guys are like wearing their outfits with all their gear on and everything. And I'm going, why aren't they just collapsing? Mm. I, I couldn't take that heat. Could you? No. Impossible. So, you know, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's try and come up with an answer to that one. I, I just don't, I don't understand how we survived over there. But Me anyway. Either. Yeah. So, well, what? But well, let's see here. Let me go to Drudge. Let's see what Drudge has got as a headline. Um, you know, when when life is is, is sell, sends you. Uh, uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. There we go. Lost at sea. Titanic claims lives of five more. <laughs> That's his headline. Oh. <laughs> Navy knew days ago. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Blaming. Titanic for that, huh? Yeah. I can think of five people in the Republican Party, including Trump, that I would have liked to have seen on that thing, on Titan. The the guy that's lying through his teeth from New York, Santos, uh, the well, child molester. Well, Santos finally name? admitted, uh, uh, because the press found out, who... Uh, paid his put bail, up the bond. put up the yeah. bond, and it was his father and his brother, I think. Mm -hmm. Father and uncle. Uncle, yeah. Or aunt or something like that. No, no, it wasn't an aunt. But, I mean, it, it, it was, uh, you know, he didn't want to do it. And I, I I, kind of have to agree with the reason he didn't want to do it. The reason he didn't want to say it is he didn't want them to get bugged about it, you know. Or threatened. Or threatened, yeah. 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 But, uh, What's the, what's the uh, child molester in the in the in the Congress in the Senate? Not Senate. In the what child House. molester? Matt Gates. Oh, Matt he Gates. Would they, he would have been another one to be good on the on the thing. You know something, Matt Gates. I don't think they're ever going to go after him. Yeah. He's got more credibility than Santos. Well, come on. You know, I've had things that have been go have floated in my toilet. That have better credibility than Santos for crying out loud. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, uh, there's a there was there was a plaque that somebody sent me and it says Congressman something Santos, and on the bottom of this brass plaque it says if that's your real name. It was like outside his office. It was cute. And what's happening out in your neck of the woods, Kevin? Anything? No, not really. Pretty quiet. Yeah. Yeah, you got a daughter who graduated. Yeah. Okay. And so now what's she doing with her life? Is she going to spend the summer just taking it easy, or is she working or what? Taking it easy, and then uh, we're waiting to see if she's going to Italy for pre-freshman class. <laughs> for pre-freshman yes. class? Wait a minute. Goes to Italy for pre Where's she going to school? Yeah, she's on a list to go to Italy for a month uh, for her arts and technology major. And Who pays she for this? To go there for a month. She'll go there in July to August mm -hmm. and get to earn like seven to ten credits before Who she even pays starts school. This? And how much is this going to cost? And who's paying for it? Right. A lot. Uh, yes. <laughs> it just adds another ten grand onto the tuition. 
I don't know where parents these days get the money to send their kids to college. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, how much you borrow it and spend the next forty years paying it off? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. And it might be there's an occasional president who tries to forgive the loan, but let's the Republican say, the Republicans will yeah. always prevent that from let's happening. Say I started saving when I started working when I was fifteen years old. So that's the smart. Approach. You started saving for a kid to go to college. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. so as I and if you didn't have a kid, you could have a hell of a vacation. Well, first of all, you had to figure somebody. You have to had to assume that somebody would want to marry you. Okay, that's first of all. Then you have the kid. Oh, and then maybe the, maybe the kid, when I started. <laughs> maybe the kid doesn't want to go to college. You know, I mean, the, the I whole have two of them that just went to community college. So it there easy. is a whole new theory now that unless you absolutely need it, don't go to college. It's an unnecessary expense you know if, if you're somebody who's like you know a kid who's got a rock band why should you go to college you know pursue your dream pr pursue your talent um, also I mean there are a lot of jobs now I mean like for instance radio I didn't have a college education I went I went to City College well, in San Francisco you did that before but you know unless it's changed all I mean when we wanted to hire a janitor we needed a degree <laughs> yeah, but if I were if I was sitting at a radio station and I were hiring radio personalities, uh, I don't think that I would ask them what how much college education they had. No, not that time. I but would, you know, no, but even now I would say I how became, good how good a show do you do? I became a manager. And they didn't ask for it, but you know, uh, I became a manager of a distribution center that handled hazardous materials and had to deal with permits and EPA and everything else. And they never asked yeah, me for Yeah, but a but those are when things. When after when they listed my job afterwards, you had to have a minimum of a degree. But those are things you could learn on the job, are they not? Absolutely, I did. Yeah, I mean, you but get somebody it, to take but, you under their wing and they show you the ropes, and all of a sudden you're doing but it. But why should people have to spend the fortunes they do on colleges? I agree. And, and, you know, when they could probably, you know, if they're going into a certain profession, they want to do it. Like, I've often felt... I've it said, has to do with pay. They can hold that over your head for pay. Okay. Well, he, here's... It's pretty what, much what it is. Here's here one, here one of the... Say, you know what? Yeah. You could be making 150 grand, but you don't have a degree, so we're going to give you 75. Well, I've yeah, suggested... pretty much what it is. I suggested something a long time ago, and everybody assailed me for it. And that was, I felt, hey, if you're going to be a lawyer... Or you're going to be a doctor. There should be hmm. trade schools for that. Sure. Right? Why do you have to go through a complete, you know, uh, college English courses and things like that in order to get four years later to a point where you can go to, to medical school? Why not you go to medical school, school, school immediately? You uh, yeah, you need, you need to understand biology and microbiology. No, but you can teach that in the trade school. Probably. You can make that. Fact, What's nice about the high school that my daughter went to, they do that. When you're a freshman, they start you on a path. And they say, you going to trade school or are you going to, to college? Do you want to, you want to learn a trade or do you want to... And they had certain ways you had to go. And you had to sign basically a contract that says, I'm going to go this way or that way. And she chose to go the college right direction and her friend a couple of her friends decided they were going to trade school yeah. you sign the contract and you stay on that path if you don't want to if you change that path somewhere like in your sophomore year you have to exit out of it and interview your way out of it and then change the path which is really good because it keeps you going one way or the other yeah you know it it, it gets you on the right path to go where you want to go and I know kids that now just graduated and they are welders and you know we have a big ag uh, agriculture here mm -hmm. and you know ffa the future farmers of america and right. all that right. these guys are going into the technology part of farming and stuff like that now and they've got all that under their belt before they even get into college so they just go to a community college for a couple of years and they can walk out and get a job and run a, a laser tractor across a across a field 
you know, without even sitting in it. And the tractor does it all, and they know how to program it and everything else. Well, yeah, I think they yeah. actually have laser tractors that zap weeds going across. Yeah, that, that's the latest thing. Is the that's very cool. The farmers don't even have to go out into the field now to to pull you weeds. Just drive a tractor, and the laser. tractor has a camera that detects the weed it in a strawberry patch. Or something. Zaps it. Yeah, lasers. They're very cool. The guy just sits there and watches it go back and forth. Yeah. So they give the the field workers other stuff. To well, I'm oh, saying, all I'm saying is that I when I said that they should go to trade schools, uh, what I was saying basically is that you go to a, a school that teaches you how to be a doctor. I mean, what is being a doctor than a trade? What is being a lawyer but a trade? But well, no, we, we, I think that's where they're going now because like. Uh, I think it's MPC, Monterey Peninsula College, and um, the other one down here in the Monterey area, hmm. uh, not Cabrillo, but the other one, those are basically schools that you decide what trade you want to go into, and you can learn all that stuff in those in those community colleges. It's a lot less than going to a, a big university. Yeah, but what would you say if your kid told you, I've decided I'm not going to college, uh, I'm going to be an influencer. Well, if she can make money doing it, uh, go for it. Yeah, but how many people can make money off of being an influencer? Hey, you know, these kids know how to do that stuff. They know how to figure it out. If they if they can figure it out, uh, Technology it. is different than when we were kids. Big yeah. time. Big well, time. Well, oh, absolutely and technology. She knows how to... She, She's in, she's going to start sell sell stuff in, in Santa Cruz this weekend. She's an entrepreneur. She's been working for three weeks now making stuff in her room, and now she's going to take it out like her mom does and go to a a, a boutique or whatever it is. It's called the Soso Market, and she's going to sell a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah, well, but, but that's art. that's practical. That's not like being an influencer. Yeah, but that's just you know she's doing that on her own, and that's what she's going into is art and technology, and that's just the bottom of the line she's starting to you know do that stuff and then when she goes to college she's going to start learning how to do the big time stuff with graphic arts and that sort of thing so that she can go to say for instance nike and say hey i'm going to design tennis shoes for this athlete yeah, yeah. you know and make ten thousand dollars a shoe <laughs> that would be nice then she could afford to uh... Pay me back for, for you, dad, dad, and mom for putting her through college. Yeah, that's exactly what we told her. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it's still, I mean, I, I, you know, like I think about what would it be like if I had to start in the business today. And number one, there is no business. So what would I decide to do? Because I, I want to be you a performer. To be, you have to. You, you, there is business. You just have to be with the time. That's all. You yeah, have to well, know what you're going after. I suppose I'd be doing a podcast, but I'd be ultimately more successful at it because as a younger person, I'd know the paradigms for making it work. Yes. Okay. Where I'm having a problem dealing with, how do I make this thing more popular? And See, I think about that a lot, Alex, with you. And mm -hmm. I think about that a lot. And I, and I was just I was just farting around with podcasts the other day. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me about this podcast with Will Arnett and Sean Hayes. And mm -hmm. yeah. who is it? Oh, Jason Bateman, they have a podcast called Smartless. And I said, what the hell? I'm going to listen to it. And it's not too bad, but those are three guys that never had a podcast. They've got sponsors. They've got all this crap. Because they got names. And they know? got names. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, I mean, the small, believe would, it or not, they, for the most part, the small people have been pushed out of podcasting. Yeah. Okay. It, it, By Rachel Maddow doing one and somebody over at CNN on doing podcast. one. You yeah. Know. Uh, so I mean, going, why can't you do something like that? You just gotta get some people. Behind because I'm 83 years old and I forgot how to. You yeah. can do it. You <laughs> just gotta find the right people to push you into it. Anyway, hey, listen, good talking to you, Kevin, as mm -hmm. always, and uh, good talking to you, Charlie. Don't let the weather get you because it's gonna get worse. Don't worry before it gets oh, yeah. better. <laughs> Your so governor says so. At what temperature do you decide not to play softball? Never. Oh, oh, they don't. It's just well, yeah. What a when wicked it's raining, sport that they don't is. Play if it's only in the rain. I mean, if, if, if it could be 120 degrees, we'll be out there playing softball. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's. They're kinda, they're kinda I, I like your moxie. I hate <laughs> moxie. 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Jeff. Good having you here. What does your T-shirt say quickly? Yeah. All I need is, and then I can't see below that. Okay. I'll... Jeans and a T-shirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Anyway, everybody, have a really nice night, okay? And give a big wave you goodbye, too. and I'll give a wave goodbye at you. Nice. There, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. And uh, they'll be back, hopefully be back again tomorrow with a lot of other people as well. In the meantime, you stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next over most of this GabNet, and he will be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Night, everybody.